what's up guys and welcome back to my channel thank you all for stopping by the channel so um i ran across this um site today and it says space weather update december 23rd 2020 missing data solar flare okay i thought this was really interesting so this was today like earlier today and um he'll give the times and this is a channel you guys can check it out at your leisure so i'll go ahead and play it the last co c3 we have two large gaps of missing time or data if you will first off from 2042 here <clears throat> we have a complete blackout in data as if a solar flare blacked lasco out that doesn't come back on that's military time you guys down here but you see the date line until after 0, 0100 utc time about three hours and 15 minutes of missing time that's not the problem though when you move over here at 4 406 utc time this morning well folks <clears throat> i want you to keep your eye on the <clears throat> south west facing limb where that sunspot ar 2794 is you're going to see 406 to 1218 or eight hours of missing time but what do you also see look now you see a solar flare leaving that sunspot they covered it up it was eight hours long that's right 406 to 1218 but you see the end of the flare there go figure right missing data eight hours and three hours and 45 minutes so all in one day we have over 11 hours of missing data but more importantly we're seeing sunspot group ar2794 southwest limb facing flare during that eight hours of missing data wouldn't you like to see why that data is missing and get your hands on that lasco c3 data before it is normalized we also see this debris cloud or whatever it is now moving in what appears to be in front of the camera to me okay so let me um skip to the other part isn't this interesting guys <laughs> Comment down below. Tell me why you think they um, blocked out that whole time. What came into Earth that they don't want us to see? <laughs> why that? What? What? Don't that must have been a big, a huge, um, a huge um, mass ejection <laughs> that they blocked it so that we couldn't see. Might it have been a supernova? <laughs> Next, I think we better take a look at ACE real-time space weather indicator versus the Enlil Prediction Center, which has gone to the dogs, folks. We do see some crossovers. We're seeing space weather events. You can see it in the phi. You can see it in the beta and the gamma here. Uh, obviously, uh, we've broken the threshold several times, especially last night when the missing data occurred. So that means that the radiation was so high, right? It was so high during those hours. <laughs> Look at density pop under uh, one centimeter cubed here, almost to nothing. Very, very strange indeed. Now this is most important. Wind speed, kilometers per second, right around six to 700 kilometers per second all night long. Temperature's about normal. Now let's uh, take a look at what was predicted. All right, first notice that the uh, plasma density scale has been moved up to 20, so they can get away with whatever this is happening on the 25th now. Okay, so he let you know that, it's, that something's going to happen on 25th. I don't know. I don't know, but they're trying to cover some stuff up. Let's take a look. Uh, I'd like to show you that we are, in fact, being hit by some sort of plasma. 
I'm not quite sure if it's a direct hit or uh, if it's a ejecti from last night or what's going on. But most importantly, look at the kilometer per second radial velocity of the wind speeds. <clears throat> They're down here at 300 and below 300. And this is for, again, today's prediction, about 250 kilometers per second. But we're at 700 kilometers per second. Do you see the difference? Right. Big problems. Yeah. The Enlil Prediction Center is useless. They have skewed the data so difficultly, it's basically not even worth using anymore, folks. It used to be able to be used and almost to uh, perfectly identify timing of uh, plasma strikes, wind strikes, etc. Now it's just crap. During that time, they are showing you three hours of uh, geomagnetic storm with a KP index of four. We're expecting stronger storms today and into tomorrow, five, maybe six on the KP index. I wanted to point that out to you. Now going to SDO HMI magnetogram, latest image released. It will be today, folks, but it's very dated. Okay. So I'm going to show you the last part of this. You guys could check out this channel on your own if you, uh, but I wanted to show you this information because they're going through some um, extreme measures to stop the public from seeing what's really going on and how much radiation, how much gamma is really coming in to our um, earth. Hmm. Here we go. Okay up to where about they are 600 plus kilometers per second currently 175 kilometers per second yeah. here <clears throat> they've got wind speeds in much better at university of maryland as you can see here <clears throat> they've got wind speeds increasing from about 375 kilometers per second up to where about they are 600 plus kilometers per second so basically he's saying the university of maryland is a little bit more in line with what's really in the earth right now compared to the one we just the predicted one that we just saw currently steady increase we also see a large impact here yesterday the 22nd not shown on ace not mm -hmm. shown on in none of the nasa stuff but we do see a density spike upwards of 25 centimeters cubed here density is way down according to university of maryland as well so none of the pictures are going to be uh, timestamped correctly for us to see what happened during that missing time. Okay. So I don't know if you guys remember um, the video I did. And if you, if you hadn't seen it, go back and watch it again. Or if you're new to the channel, remember we talked on cosmic disturbances and we talked about when the um, solar winds and solar flares, the CMEs come into our earth, how um, it affects the poles. And that's why you see the the geomag um, geomagnetic poles, and that's why you see the aurora lights. But we also talked about how it affects electricity, right? Remember that. We also talked about how it affects satellites, navigation. Um, we talked about how with the poles changing, it it turn it switches the navigation, so the airplanes won't be able to pick up the signals and you're probably gonna start seeing a lot more airplanes dropping out of the skies, <laughs> you know, because they hid something there for a reason. They hid it. And then yesterday I got a text from my utility company saying um, in an event that we have a power outage, here's what you need to do, blah, 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 blah. And then ready.gov posted this, power outages. <laughs> prepare now you guys can go check it out survive during right which takes us to schumann resonance right we know with the schumann resonance it starts with electrical storms right these are more than just spectacles and frightening events an electrical storm generates lightning which creates electromagnetic energy this energy circling as a wave between the ionosphere and the earth bumps into itself amplifying frequencies and turning them to resonant waves remember we talked about that in um my ley lines video and we were just saying how 
the levels, right, with the Schumann resonance, it, it, they, they normally are stable. If the earth is at a 7.83, now it can go higher. They, they do fluctuate. But if it's at 7.83 hertz, HZ, then our brain, the brain, our brain frequencies are able to um, flow better. Uh, we're able to make better decisions. We're able to be more in tune. And we're actually on a higher level thinking right and see what they notice is that this now this number has gone up to 8.5 and higher now so there's a lot of brain activity going on so hence why they're starting to hide stuff people are starting to be aware see when we didn't know what was going on we couldn't read these charts we didn't understand you know what was going on i guess it was okay but now when we see all this magnetic you know, this gamma and everything coming in, we know what that's about. And it's funny because like on some of these other channels, when they're talking, they're like, oh, wow, I wonder what this is. Why would it, you know, why did all this increase in, in, um, in solar, you know, solar flares and solar winds. But we know what that is. <laughs> we know what that is. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Anyway, guys, thank you for stopping by the channel. Comment down below. Shalom.